reason why you use soft operators is because their their ability uh, and their skill set is honed to be able to discriminate. Uh, you don't need daylight to do it. Uh, you prefer the night because uh, we own it. We had over 500 special operators from the United States involved in the exercise. We had both fixed wing and rotary wing uh, aircraft. We had uh, maritime forces the, from the Marines and the Navy and also Army Special Forces and almost a like number of Australians. They approach those ships whether it's clandestinely, uh, quietly, or it's on you know helicopters coming in fast. We all see the movies where the SEALs are getting on the ship and taking down the targets quickly, but uh, there's more to that. Hours of limited visibility allows you the, the surprise effect on a target. Um, people don't know you're coming. They don't suspect you're coming. When these operations go down, they're sensitive. Time sensitive is the key. All right, gents, listen up. We're getting online right here. It's important that you minimize collateral damage, civilian casualties. You're talking about mature special forces operators who make mature decisions on the spot that's going to save not only the lives of your operators, but the lives of those that are not involved. We have great technology. It allows us to be to be very, very effective at, at night when a lot of uh, a lot of threat forces would not be so capable. It minimizes the chance for for civilian casualties in, in any sort of kinetic operation, and so that gives us a lot more freedom of maneuver um, without the chance of of uh, anybody else being in the way. Do this, hey, that guy's been searched. Anyone who's been searched, cross their arms and bring home every member. Minimize collateral damage, civilian casualties, and produce time-sensitive products that uh, will save lives uh, at the end of the day. In combat, it doesn't matter who the brother next to you is, what, he, what uniform he's wearing. If he's a soft operator, you're in it together, and uh, there's no outside help for the most part. Nine times out of ten, you're on your own. When you get into conflict, it's not so much what the overarching goals are strategically. It's uh, ensuring that you and your brothers get home and, and you, you live to share those experiences uh, together. 